Welcome ladies and gentlemen to that video series around data governance in One Identity Manager. Together with me behind the desk today, Matthew Muse. He's the dark lord about data governance. Yeah, he knows everything about this part of the product and I'm very glad that he is here to show us the data governance edition and to step with us about the data governance feature. Matt, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very fine, how are you? Good, good, good. So we are uh, really happy now to show you something about data governance. Can you tell us what we will see here in that video series? Sure, so we're going to show things in data governance from the very low level all the way to the high level. So we're going to talk about the main use cases of data governance from the perspective of a business owner, somebody who owns data, um, things like company policies that may apply to their data, the periodic attestations and recertification process that you can apply to your data, but then also talking at the very low level around the deployment of DGE as well, all the things you need to do to get that data flowing up into Dell One Identity Manager so that you can actually do those things, right? So the deployment of the agents, um, the enabling of properties like turning on resource activity and setting your scanning schedule, things like that, and just the overall health of your data governance infrastructure to make sure that once you get that data flowing that you can actually have that higher level uh, business value within the product. We'll also be talking about things like the resource access reports and the account access reports and how data governance makes it uh, very easy and the, the data in those reports is actually very all-encompassing. So you have a very good understanding of where a particular person may have access across all your file systems. So we'll be talking about all of that. So low level all the way to the high level. Okay, Matt, let's start with the first session. What we will see in the first session. So this first session, we're basically just gonna give an overview of the architecture of DGE, how it fits into One Identity Manager. Obviously, DGE is a little bit different in a lot of aspects. So we wanna give a, an overview of that so people have an understanding of, of just how much DGE fits into the product. Um, and we'll also give a bit of a history of the product as well so that we understand how data governance came to be. Cool, let's start with that. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of data governance edition. Originally, we had this product called Quest Access Manager. Quest Access Manager was a very lightweight IT centric tool, which would allow you to do basically the things that data governance in some aspects does. It allows you to deploy agents, to watch your file servers, uh, your NAS devices to scan security and to monitor activities. Now Quest Access Manager, very fast to deploy, up and running in about five minutes, SQL Server, backend database, etc. Uh, and it had, you know, what it did, it did very well. But what it was missing were those use cases from the business perspective. So policies and self-service and the web portal view of, uh, of data. So it was clear that we needed something else. We needed to integrate with another technology that already had these things. And that's where Active Entry came in. At the time, it was called Active Entry, uh, which is now called One Identity Manager. So the combination of these two products is what you see today in Data Governance Edition. In fact, um, there are some places where in the UI, you can actually see some of the remnants of the Quest Access Manager product. If you look at the database tables, for example, you'll see a lot of the DGE tables actually start with the prefix QAM, which stands for Quest Access Manager. So all of the database tables that start with QAM, that's DGE. So that's how you can look in the database and you can identify which tables are specific to data governance. So the combination of these two products together into data governance, it provides the full use cases that we were trying to map to for business owners. So being able to log into the web portal and see a view of your data, have attestations, have company policies, do self-service for resources that, that you own. Um, all of these things became possible with the joining of these two products. So for those of you who are familiar with One Identity Manager, on the screen, you'll see two things that are familiar. You'll see the manager and you'll see the One Identity Manager database. 
Everything else is data governance specifically. So data governance is a server agent based architecture. The data governance service exists on a machine that you deploy it to. And then from there, you deploy individual agents that will target your file systems, your NAS devices, your SharePoint, etc. So what you see on here is the communication lines between the agents and the server, and then the databases that the DGE service actually talks to. So you see the data governance server has a connection to the one identity manager, the main database, as well as to another database called the activity database. And that's where the actions that are performed on your NAS devices, things like setting security or closing files, etc. That's where those actions are going to be stored and aggregated so that we can return that information later in activity reports, as well as for perceived owner calculations. So the UI and the, uh, the manager, PowerShell, third-party web services, those are your interactions with the data governance server. Also from the job service as well, you'll have a job service that's set up as the data governance connector. But basically this is, the, this is a high level overview of, of really what the DGE architecture is. On the left-hand side, you see you have some agents out there and we have a few different types of agents, but these are the common ones. For Windows servers, you can deploy local agents, which means we actually physically deploy a service running on those Windows servers that will then scan security, watch for activities, etc. We have on the bottom a NAS device, something like a NetApp filer or a EMC device that we don't have native agents for. So we deploy an agent that exists on a Windows server that will monitor those NAS devices remotely. We call them remote managed hosts. And then in the middle, it's kind of a, a mixture of a local versus a remote. We have a SharePoint as well. So data governance supports SharePoint 2010 and 2013. We deploy an agent to a application server in the farm. So it deploys locally, but it acts like a remote. Those are the three physical types of hosts we support. We have other types of managed host types, but for the intents and purposes of understanding the architecture, this is really the core understanding of data governance.